speak a lot about Twitter. Um, now, uh, we're just about to introduce the global content director of Twitter, but I have to say that um, Dominic Proctor kindly mentioned the Festival of Media when we launched back in Venice in 2007. Well, the chap who chaired that event uh, was a guy called Ray Snoddy. Um, so imagine how I, old I now feel that I'm introducing his son uh, to speak at the Festival of Media. Um, so uh, he's just texted me to say what a proud parent he is. Let's find out just how, how proud he should be by hearing a little story about how Twitter is getting into the world of content. Ladies and gentlemen, Oliver Snoddy. Awesome. So I spent the um, best part of 32 years trying to get outside of the shadow of my old man, and I've just been shamed publicly in front of about 700 people. So off to a killer start. Um, so I'm going to build on the conversation in the last talk um, and really kind of look at how brands tell stories in a world that's getting insanely fast, in a world that's getting highly fragmented. And for us, for me and for Twitter, two of the key sort of uh, things within that are just the importance of contextual relevance. So understanding the live um, signal of context from your consumers and also timeliness. So how do brands really anticipate and plan for moments of greatest relevance? I'd argue that in a networked world, those moments can be incredibly powerful. I'm going to look at a few examples as we go through of brands who've managed to do that. So we're going to talk about brands living in the moment. So everything's getting incredibly fast, none so more than in news. Um, this just from uh, last week, uh, you know, an earthquake hit Los Angeles. Almost instantaneously, the LA Times managed to tell the entire world about it. You know, we're talking fractions, you know, seconds rather than minutes. Did you feel that? We did. A whole lot of shaking going on in LA. Um, a few moments later, uh, a few minutes later, they were also able to publish a report. And it turns out this was actually largely created uh, by an algorithm. So they actually have an earthquake algorithm that puts the story together so that a human can quickly fact check it, hit send, and it buys them that competitive advantage. So this report came out in a matter of minutes. We're seeing news get incredibly fast. Everything's trending to now. I guess the question within this is how do brands compete in this sea of real-time content that news providers are publishing? Uh, media is certainly getting faster. I know lots of people have been talking about programmatic buying. Uh, but even sort of stepping back uh, further into kind of the world of print, uh, this is an example from Specsavers in the UK, an eye clinic. Uh, they have a real heritage in doing contextually relevant print ads. So London 2012, a huge um, mistake on the organising committee. The South Korean flag goes up uh, as the North Korean women's team prepare to play football. Um, and the next day they take this printout ad, should have gone to Specsavers, their famous line written in Korean. Um, so really timely, really contextually relevant, um, but today they can do that much faster. So this is literally a week ago. This is Arsenal playing Chelsea. Somehow the wrong player gets sent off and in swoop spec savers with their should have booked an eye test. Within a few minutes, 2,000 retweets, they're able to deploy the same techniques but much, much faster. In this particular case, it was quite interesting. The following day, rather than just taking out a print ad, uh, the press actually wrote the story for them. They actually used, should have gone to Specsavers, the Times, um, the Sun, and Specsavers found themselves in the situation where they were actually reporting on the news that was using their tagline, just as an illustration of how quickly things are moving and opportunities for brands in the moment. Um, moving away from news and media, this is a personal favorite of mine. Beer is also getting fast. Um, so this is uh, in Minnesota, a Minnesota brewery uh, has tried and actually ultimately failed because of legal reasons to deliver beer to ice fishers via drone. Uh, this is certainly uh, the kind of innovation that I could certainly get behind. Uh, everything is getting faster, everything is trending to now. Uh, and ultimately, um, I'd argue that culture is getting faster. So from the serious to the mundane to the big to the small, um, this is an example uh, minutes after the earthquake in LA uh, a very local scale, very small scale, but people realizing that it wasn't that bad, actually starting to make fun of the earthquake, creating their own small kind of units of culture. This poster reads, LA earthquake 2014, we will rebuild, build, showing a, a salt cellar knocked over as kind of probably, I think there was another one with someone's hat that had fallen off. Um, so this is obviously a very small scale example, but it's important. Culture is forming in an, on a near kind of real time basis 
All of this creates opportunities for brands. Um, so we'd argue that moments are incredibly important. Um, I think starting off with the obvious people uh, understand that you know, in the moment, our awareness is heightened, emotions tend to be higher. There is the opportunity to communicate and connect in the moment like nothing else. But I just want to explore a little bit kind of deeper as to why we think that is and why, in particular, in relation to Twitter, we think the moment is incredibly relevant. So the first one we've kind of already touched upon, uh, and that's just the potential for greater contextual relevance in the moment. In the moment, it's very easy to bounce off other things and borrow equity from other things. So case in point, uh, last year, the um, Apple, the iPhone 5C is launched in all its marvelous colors. Uh, this created the opportunity for Nokia to tweet this. Thanks, Apple. Imitation is the best form of flattery. 40,000 retweets. You know, the copy was nice. Uh, but I'd certainly argue that the timing was the biggest factor in all of those retweets and all of the, that interest. Another reason at Twitter that we think is really important around the moment is the concept of social proof. So as platforms get more open uh, and you understand what people are doing around you, that also forms a really powerful impact in the moment. So harking back to some research from the 60s, um, so Stanley Milgram showed the impact of other people and the visible crowd around you. So he did a very simple experiment. He stood people uh, on the corner of buildings in New York City, asked them to point up or look up to the 40th floor, and then he observed passers-by. And he found that how people reacted was actually incredibly consistent. So if one person looked up, there was a roughly 40% chance that you as a passerby would look up. Uh, as that increased to five, um, that was 80%. So we're absolutely influenced by what's happening in the moment. We're also incredibly influenced by what's going on around us and the other people that we can see or hear. You know, it's the roar of the crowd, it's the spontaneous applause that you might hear that encourages you to do so. So fast forward um, to now, and we see pretty much that exact same thing happening on the platform. So I'm gonna show an episode of The X Factor from the UK, and we're gonna look at actually what happens when people watch TV, when they tweet along, and how those messages spread across the platform. Uh, so in this particular episode, uh, it's an audition, this guy, I won't repeat his lyrics, but he causes Sharon Osbourne to um, collapse into a fit of laughter uh, with uh, his choice song. Uh, and this is one particular tweet. Um, so Sharon Osbourne is just the best ever. I'm laughing uncontrollably. And we're going to track that tweet and look at how that spreads across the platform. We're looking here at impressions as opposed to the numbers of tweets. So this tweet flows into people's timelines that follow that individual, an impression is recorded. Um, this person had a number of followers and a number of different impressions are recorded during the broadcast window. Um, later, actually after the broadcast, other people log in and see that tweet in their visible timeline. So, so far, so simple, the propagation or the spread of a single tweet. I think where this gets interesting in harking back to Milgram is where you actually look at that en masse. So we're going to look now at 1% of all of the data. There were 500,000 odd people tweeting about that particular episode. And you get this very clear pattern across the platform uh, of exposure, of awareness, as people not necessarily tweeting or watching the program are exposed to that. And we think that's really powerful. It's powerful uh, because of the, um, seeing the other tweets in your timeline. It's also powerful because people tend to see multiple tweets. Again, it's being steered by this visible crowd, and that's another benefit of the moment on top of the contextual relevance. Um, so just as this builds out, in this particular instance, um, 18 million impressions were recording it, recorded in the UK from roughly 500,000 tweets. So that's the power of the visible crowds, the power of the moment. I believe that um, I may have chosen the next example slightly poorly, so it probably play better for the UK and Irish uh, members of the audience. But uh, when we get past the science and the data, I actually find the person who's really nailed real-time marketing and really kind of enhanced, certainly my understanding of it, is actually Father Ted. Um, we have a look at a quick clip. OK, one last time. These are small, but the ones out there are far away. <laughs> small, far away. I forget. I mean, he's pretty much nailed the whole thing. Things close up appear bigger. You know, when brands do things in the moment, they appear bigger, they feel bigger. We think that can be incredibly powerful. 
Uh, so just a, a slight detour into a few Twitter numbers, um, kind of in relation to some of the things the last speaker spoke of. So 76% of our users access Twitter on a mobile device. Mobile first, a lot of these experiences are taking place on a mobile device. A billion tweets every two days, so therein lies the opportunity, the moments. Um, our users say that, you know, Twitter, over 50% say that Twitter gives them the latest news faster than any other sources. 66% um, turn to Twitter to watch live events. So kind of Twitter is really this live medium, um, a marketplace of moments, if you will. Uh, and when we think about the opportunity, it's kind of less about a target market and more about a target moment. We think they're incredibly important and powerful for brands. Um, so, you know, the, the net effect of mobile and all those things going on, more moments in this particular view, geotag tweets in different cities of the world, you can literally see the outline of the different cities, um, and ultimately we think in that moment more meaning. So just want to explore this concept of more meaning in the moment through three short stories. Uh, just some of the things that have happened recently on the platform, things that happen regularly, if not the exact same thing, uh, to understand some of those things that are going on. So the first story is around the Oscars uh, recently. Uh, so it was obviously a huge, huge night on Twitter and on the, on the first screen. Uh, so we saw 14.7 million tweets during the live broadcast, significantly up on last year. Um, this is what that looks like. So the world, or certainly parts of the world, awake, lighting up as those tweets flow. Um, you know, live engagement, um, again, the visible crowd watching and tweeting along with the show. More importantly, those tweets flowed pretty broadly, 3.3 billion impressions on those particular tweets around the Oscars. So in terms of discovery, in terms of the reach of that, very significant, and also that growing very quickly. And of all of those tweets, you know, this was by far the most famous, now the most retweeted tweet of all time, Ellen's selfie, um, literally circled the earth in you know, a matter of moments, um, huge reach, but kind of more importantly than that, really spawned its own piece of culture. Now, the selfie wasn't a new thing, um, but you know, the idea of a group selfie really took off after that moment. So whether it be the great and the good here, the Clintons, uh, a slightly uh, more bizarre mix of people here with Ed Miliband, Labour leader, Emma Thompson and Joey Essex from TOWIE. Um, not sure we'll ever see that particular group reunited once again. Uh, the Simpsons got in on the act, um, 64,000 retweets, again the power of timing uh, and also contextual relevance. Um, and brands got in on the act, Lego here with a really nice um, tweet. So, you know, the potential to drive tweets far, to drive reach, but also to effectively create culture in the moment and to bounce off those pieces of culture. So the second story is one that happened at a much smaller scale, uh, much more localised. There's obviously been uh, terrible flooding in the UK, uh, particularly in Somerset, and it's really about human connection. Um, so in response to farmers not having what they needed, uh, in response to difficulty getting aid to them, um, a group of um, farming students did a pretty remarkable thing, and they actually used the platform to organise donations and to coordinate themselves. So using the hashtag ForageAid, they've actually achieved um, you know, what lots of infrastructures have actually struggled to do, and getting donations and resources to these people. So this is just one vine of some of those uh, donations being organised and ready to go out to farms. Um, brands have also taken part in this, so helping to deliver some of those donations, in this case Tesco, and many of the organisers have specifically thanked the brands for their role. So completely different scale, obviously nowhere near the same reach, um, but you know, very significant, a great way of organising people and ultimately driving action around that particular hashtag. And then finally, um, so something that's obviously been dominated kind of news recently, and I'm certainly not going to get into the politics of Crimea, but I just want to illustrate um, how around every news event, there are multiple stories and sub-narratives that take place. Some of them are opportunities for brands, some of them are not. Uh, but just looking at Crimea, just looking at some of the stories that have flown on the platform. So the, the most obvious breaking news. So this example from BBC. Um, at the beginning of the crisis, this is you know, the more typical obvious things you'd expect on the platform. Less obvious are things like this, a really unique conversation between the UK embassy in Russia um, sorry, and the Russian embassy in the UK. So each state in their own position and having a conversation and a dialogue 
you know, political dialogue openly and very publicly, which is pretty unusual. And I can't think of many other places that such a conversation would happen. And then amidst all of the seriousness and you know, discussions and dialogue around the actual event, as with all events, there are also moments of light-hearted kind of entertainment. Um, so one of the memes and the pieces of culture that's emerged around this is uh, Dave on the phone. Um, so in this particular shot that Dave Cameron tweeted out, looking slightly moody on the phone, apparently speaking to Barack Obama, uh, captured people's imagination. Um, comedian uh, Rob Delaney tweeted in, I'm on the li line now too, get me up to speed. Um, and pretty remarkably, Sir, pa um, Sir Patrick Stewart took part in the conversation with the aid of some wet wipes. Um, he was patched in, he was ready to help, and he was very apologetic for the delay. Um, bringing it full circle, um, you know, the Prime Minister tweeted back out uh, with this tongue-in-cheek tweet saying that, I guess proving that he does actually speak to US presidents, uh, not necessarily on the phone, but face-to-face, -face, and, and there was, you know, that particular meme continued. So from the very serious to the you know, small kind of cultural moments that are fun, lots of different things happen on the platform. And this is really kind of fast culture. Um, we see memes flare up, we see some persist, we see some die away very quickly, um, but all of these create opportunities for brands. So I guess just to kind of go into the final section, what does this mean for brands? How can they actually live in these moments and take advantage of them? So we don't think the brands have to necessarily chase all of these live opportunities. That's just one small aspect of it. We break down moments into these four categories. So everyday campaign live and reactive. And I'm just going to go briefly through these four different opportunities. So in many cases, the everyday moments actually pose the greatest opportunity. So running, for example, there are literally millions of mentions of running every week. Uh, it turns out we're quite predictable uh, species. Um, so people tweet about running in the mornings and the evenings. They don't particularly like tweeting about running on Monday mornings. And best made plans tend to go down as the week continues. So we're very predictable. Um, you know, huge opportunity, a scaled opportunity for any brand interested in running to take part in that conversation and to engage in those personal moments. Here's just one example from Nike, tweeting on the 1st of January, outrun 2013, hashtag just do it. So that's everyday moments, big scaled opportunity. Um, the second is campaign moments, and this is really the opportunity to connect different parts of advertising and to extend stories. Here we're looking for stories that essentially have no ending. They can be continued in different media. And a great recent example of that is Lynx or Axe Kiss for Peace that's run in a number of different countries. Uh, I was just going to briefly show the spot for those who haven't seen it. So yes, it's certainly a lofty claim for a deodorant brand. However, um, they did a fantastic job of connecting different uh, media and extending that story. So for example, they used the hashtag kiss for peace. They encouraged people to send in their selfies of people kissing. Um, those were placed up on a huge billboard in Times Square. So connecting TV, out of home, Twitter is the kind of glue uh, connecting those things. So again, extending stories, increasing engagement, but also extending the life of those particular stories. A good example of a campaign moment. Live moments. I get this, this is sort of more into the sort of traditional real-time marketing. Uh, just one example here. I guess you either um, you know, learn how to anticipate these moments. So if you take football, for example, there are certain things that you know will probably happen. Someone will probably win. There may be a terrible tackle. Someone may get sent off. And you can anticipate for those things, as, um, for example, Adidas often do. Uh, or it turns out finger puppets uh, and Vine is actually a very good way of reacting quickly and being able to create content 
uh, in near real time, this example from Heineken in Brazil. So creating content in the moment, closer to the kind of newsroom approach. And then finally, I guess the sort of poster child of real-time marketing are these reactive moments. Um, so you can't plan for these by their very nature, but you have to react uh, in the moment. In this example from Innocent Drinks in the UK, obviously nothing to do with transport, but in the midst of a London tube strike, something that was certainly on the minds of people in London, they just tweet out something that certainly kind of embodies their brand um, values. So different ways that you might get around London, space hopper, submarine, um, I believe there are some others at the very bottom tube, not today. Uh, it gets uh, a thousand retweets. So timeliness uh, can be incredibly valuable. Um, and you know, it's about the moment, but actually more than that, it's really about how you connect these moments together. So we like to sort of think about how brands can gain momentum. Uh, and really that's kind of the goal. How can you create momentum, value creation, and maintain that value creation over time? So I'm just going to show you one view uh, or potential view on what momentum for a brand could look like. So data visualization looking at um, Telco brand three in the UK. Um, and as we play this, um, you'll see a number of tweets against their hashtag. You'll see different influencers come into the center. You'll see the ebb and flow of the campaign as it appeared on TV and other pieces uh, went live. And what you're really looking at here is kind of the live nature and momentum of a particular brand in time. Uh, and we think this is really the goal of a lot of marketing, is to how do you maintain this? How do you keep brand content rising to the top against that sea of all other real-time content? Uh, and that's you know, one of the goals is how you maintain that momentum. So kind of rapid going into the close, um, a number of reasons for doing that. So one of the reasons that we think momentum is important is that it creates stronger, more adaptive brands. Um, so brands as a product of the different moments people have with them, they build equity, they build strength, they build muscle memory, if you like, in terms of how they respond to people. And a brand that's doing a great job of that is O2 in the UK. So their customer service is great, and because of that, they're able to do proactive marketing off the back of that customer service. And that works in the good times and the bad. So in the good times, rapper in the UK, JME, tweets out, not at O2. They respond to him um, effectively with a sales message. They turn it into a rhyme. It turns into this huge conversation. It gets 1,500 retweets. Not only have they actually potentially persuaded him onto the network, they've also turned that into marketing. We also see that in bad times. So O2 suffered a serious network outage uh, just over a year ago. Um, Obviously, customers were very irate that their phones didn't work for nearly 24 hours. Because they had this heritage and this strong brand, they were able to deal with it in a human, transparent way. And amazingly, their brand love scores um, that was carried out looking at doing some research actually went up in the middle of a business crisis. So we think these kind of brands with momentum that are strong can really be incredibly powerful. Moments can be strung together to tell stories. So Adidas often use the hashtag all in. Uh, in this case, congratulating Andy Murray. As they say, not bad for a man with no personality when he won the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. Hashtag all in for Murray, 13,000 retweets. It's timely, but it's building on this platform all in. And ultimately, all of this is really about allowing brands to act more like culture. So from the Grammys earlier in the year, Arby's fast food chain in the US noticed that Pharrell's hat looked a lot like their logo. Um, and for that moment, they really became a part of the culture of the Grammys. 83,000 retweets. They got into a, a dialogue with Pharrell, and they really became a part of that particular moment. So we think that it's about contextual relevance, it's about timeliness, um, and it's ultimately about living in the moment. Thank you very much.